The world of automotive YouTube is full of people doing questionable things in order to appease the algorithm. And let's be clear, if the algorithm and its nebulous cloud is following other content creators as much as it's hounding Kate Walton Elliott, then I'm going to be very frank. I can understand why so much tomfoolery and Jack Hattery go in to the name of edutainment. Luckily, Kate appears completely immune to the effects of the mighty A, and, well, it doesn't bother me because I'm a part-time fluffy animal, at least. I think that's the reason it leaves me alone, because the internet likes cats and dogs, right? Be that as it may, we've seen a rise in videos from other content creators in which they do questionable things with electric vehicles that, if they had RTFM'd, they'd know the simple solution to. And for those with children watching, that's read the freaking manual. Yeah, freaking. You can thank me later. This apparent lack of reading skill or pre-preparation has left content creators like TFL Truck stuck at an intersection in a stranded vehicle because they couldn't figure out how to lift the hood of their Hummer EV in order to disconnect the 12 volt battery to reset the truck's computer. Or in fact, Hoovy getting issues with towing or any other number of people getting stranded or having a bad experience charging when the reality is their woes had an easy fix. So today I've got two very simple questions for you. Do you know the basic stuff about your car? And two, if things go wrong at the side of the road, do you know the tips and tricks to get back on your way? If the answer to both or either of those is no, then stick around because we're coming to your rescue like Obi-Wan coming out of retirement to kick Vader's butt. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, in case you hadn't noticed, I'm quite nerdy, and as a consequence, I have this desire to learn how things work. In fact, if I'm using something I don't understand at some very basic level or other, I get very nervous. When I was seven, I thought nothing of pulling my parents' old radio apart to get it working again. I made my way through music college by buying broken old Macs from a bric-a-brac store run by a lovely Hasidic gentleman in Stamford Hill, London, and then flogging them to my classmates. And I've modified pretty much every car I've owned, even if sometimes that's resulted in bad things happening. It's come to my attention though, however, that most people don't think like me and most people are happy enough to get behind the wheel of their car without knowing the stuff that I consider pretty important. Like where the fuse box is, how to refill various fluids and how to jumpstart it in an emergency. And while some countries like the UK now mandate a basic level of under the bonnet proficiency as part of the driving test, not every country is the same. And that leads to inordinate numbers of people driving around in cars that, when even simple things go wrong, are left stuck waiting for a tow. I refer you back to TFL and Hoovy, among others. And if you think like me, well, newsflash, you're in the minority too. Most people don't give a flying rat's bottom how their car works because they have breakdown services on speed dial. And I'm not trying to shame them, because that approach is okay too. But in a world where everything costs money, including time, knowing how to get yourself at least into a safe position without requiring a tow might be a skill worth learning. So without further ado, here are six things that we think you should have some proficiency with when it comes to your new EV. Number one, know how to open the bonnet or the hood. It's no secret that today's modern cars are far more advanced than the ones you probably learned to drive in, which were in turn more advanced than your parents' first car. My first car had a functional starting handle alongside an electric starter motor, and knowing how to use that starting handle saved my butt multiple times, as well as freak out my in-laws when they visited from America. In much the same way, while some new EVs coming to market have electrically operated hoods or bonnets, giving you access to what lies beneath, knowing how to manually release it in an emergency 
is a good thing because often your vehicle's 12 volt battery, if indeed it has one, is hidden underneath a panel somewhere under that mess. And by law in most countries, all cars need to have some form of a manual hood release that enables you to manually open it if the electric lifting mechanism is broken and you've got no power to the vehicle. Usually it's down by the driver's knees somewhere near the door pillar, but it may not always be a clearly marked lever because if the hood is electric, the automaker wants you to use the electric mechanism instead of the manual one. Your car's manual will have a location of that pull, and if you are in a real mess, Google on your cell phone is your friend. Some cars, like some Tesla models and the Ford Mustang Mark E, even have special jump cable points hidden beneath the panel in the bumper, so you can attach a 12 volt jumper cable to pop the hood release if your battery is flat and you can't get inside the car. And knowing where manual door releases are in case your car has a problem when you're inside is also a very important thing. More and more cars use electromechanical poppers, but again, they will all have hidden manual releases for emergency use. Number two, know where everything is, like fluid, batteries, and other things. Aside from knowing how to open the bonnet and doors in an emergency, knowing where basic things like the accessory battery, if your car has one, and things like the windscreen washer fluid is a must. So too is knowing if your car has a spare wheel, where it lives, and if it doesn't have a spare wheel, where your emergency tyre repair kit is, which of course requires you to know how to change a tyre or use a can of fixer flat. Although I should note that tyre fixers like fixer flat aren't always the best things to use and should only be used as a last resort to get you to some level of safety. And while I'm not advocating that everyone does their own servicing, knowing where the brake fluid reservoir and cooling loop reservoirs are, there's often one for the charger, one for the battery pack and one for the motor, not to mention your air conditioning or heat pump system, can help you ensure that the car stays healthy and doesn't visit the dealership more than it has to. And in an ideal world where every dealership and mechanic are consummate professionals and do their jobs to the letter of what's suggested by the manufacturer, you wouldn't need to know this stuff. But I've also heard plenty of horror stories about cooling loops and other fluids not being properly refilled or checked at service time. I've also watched plenty of Just Rolled In on YouTube. What? It's a guilty pleasure. And yes, I am aware. It's called Schadenfreude. I watched Avenue Q too. Number three, how to jumpstart your car. Most modern EVs, there are a few exceptions, still use a 12 volt starter battery to get your car running. Instead of turning a starter motor or an internal combustion engine car though, they are used to energize the low voltage circuits that the car has for things like lights and for your radio, as well to energize the massive high voltage relays that switch on to send high voltage, high current power to your car's drivetrain and HVAC systems. As we've explained in this video, link in the description, 12 volt batteries going glitchy is a fairly common occurrence in EVs because most automakers just use regular old starter batteries that don't get discharged deeply enough to stay healthy in an EV and regularly go wonky when the weather goes south. So knowing where the 12 volt battery is and how to charge it is an important skill that could be the difference between a happy commute and a dead car get some power to that 12 volt battery and the associated ancillary circuits and your car could quite happily turn on using power from its traction battery to charge up the unwell starter. I know for the title of this section I used jump start and that is a bit of a misnomer since many automakers recommend you don't jump start your EV but a small lithium jump pack that you can attach your car's 12 volt battery to can be a valuable stocking filler for the holidays and it can be the difference between being late on an appointment and getting there on time. Point number four, how to reset your infotainment system. Electric cars, like ICE cars, are getting smarter and in turn more complex. Much of your average modern EV is controlled not by direct mechanical levers, but by electronic switches, CAN bus networking, and enough computing power to make the space shuttle feel inadequate. The problem is, uh, most EVs don't ever fully power down those systems, so when things go wrong, you may find a problem that's caused by a software glitch, or 
heck, even a cosmic ray causing a bit to flip, will persist through countless reboot cycles. And that can be pretty infuriating. Oh, and if you want to know more about bit flipping, check the video below that I've linked to because it's fascinating. Just like a computer sometimes has to be fully turned off, left unplugged and then powered back on to fix a pernicious fault that's residing in memory, so too do sometimes car infotainment systems or main computers need a little control alt delete. Luckily most cars on the market today have an infotainment system that has a special secret reboot command similar to that single finger salute that lets you reboot the infotainment system to fix any wayward bugs. And while you can do it while driving in most cases, you probably don't want to do that. I'd advise you stop somewhere safe before doing it in case something worse happens. Oh, and because 12 volt batteries on the fritz can also cause problems with computer code, if your car starts behaving weirdly, sometimes disconnecting the 12 volt accessory battery for 30 seconds is enough to temporarily clear the errors and help you get to a dealership where you can get your car a full bill of health. With that, a small disclaimer, if your car glitches and won't go into gear or something else happens that looks like it might be a massive problem, like, oh, I don't know, a main traction battery fault, you should totally not drive your car. But if it's a non-essential fault that's more an inconvenience, like cruise control failing to engage, for example, pulling over somewhere safe, resetting your car's computer and reconnecting the battery could help you get to where you're going before you then get your car checked out by the dealership. And yes, if your car does glitch like the TFL Hummer did, get it to a dealership. I'm not joking. Number five, how to put your car in neutral or tow. I'm going to assume that most of you know by now that for the most part, you should not tow your EV with its wheels on the road. That's not good for the car, especially if it's off. But sometimes low speed towing is required and every EV on the market today has some special way to enable a safe low speed towing mode. I am not talking about going down the road at 60 miles behind Billy Bob and his pickup truck. I am talking about gently getting your otherwise stranded car onto the back of a flatbed without scraping its tires along the ground. When an EV fails and becomes immobile, it may not want to let you go into gear, so knowing where the hidden neutral mode is, sometimes it's a menu on the infotainment system, sometimes it's a small recessed mechanical button, and sometimes it's something else, is pretty important. Your car's manual, again, will contain this information, along with everything else you should know. And if you don't have a physical manual, it's probably online. And for Pete's sake, maybe Charlie's too. Don't let the tow truck operator just drag your car onto a flatbed without putting it in neutral first. And for goodness sake, don't let any wheels that are powered by an electric motor have contact with the road while towing an unpowered EV at speed. Number six, know how to remove the charge cable in an emergency. This might be a surprise for you, but charging stations sometimes fail. Usually it's just because they're sucky and Sometimes it's just because the day has a Y in it. But regardless, knowing how to remove a DC quick charging cable from your car in the event that either the charging station or the car glitches is kind of important. Most modern EVs, those with CCS at least, have release cables hidden somewhere behind the charging port, so in the front or the trunk area, and that allows you to manually pull and release the CCS connector if the event happens that it ends up being stuck on your car. But for goodness sake, do make sure the charging station is actually not providing power to your car when you do this. Just saying that that could be nasty. So there you have it. Six things we think every EV owner should know about their cars. So the next time things go pee tong, you won't be left stranded in a left turn lane while a local cop sits behind you eating donuts. Have you been saved by knowing some of these tips we've laid out? Have you got other ones you'd like to share? Or would you just like to call the tow company? Let us know below. And that's it for today. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links in the video description. And if you really like today's video, why not leave us a super thanks? It is easy to do and everything you send goes towards helping us make great content. If you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed to this channel and to our other channel, Transport Evolved Take Two, and give that bell a gentle ding to be told when our next video goes live. 
And before I go, do check out our regular sponsors at Unspun, Energy Sage, and YouGears. Links below. And if you use any of those companies and the relevant codes, you'll be helping us out too. Thanks on behalf of the entire crew, go to everyone who makes this channel possible. That includes everyone who supports us on Patreon and YouTube, as well as those of you who watch and share our videos. If you are a supporter at the charged up level, you'll see your name right here on my right. And if you've just joined and your name isn't showing, don't worry. We do currently render the list every week or so, and sometimes our videos are produced a few days or weeks in advance, like this one. Thanks to our self-driving tier supporters, Mike Reader, Patrick Buyaski, Chris Magsaw, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Mura Pinheiro, Brophy Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tesla in the Gong, Dan Bear, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Regine Fellows, Denny Hyde, Chris Asenta, and Jim Burness. And of course, super out of this world support to our Starman level supporters, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, JP Fagerback, Joe Bresney, John Lyons, Rory Litwin, Kevin Burrowbridge, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnek, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and Ian. If you'd like to be part of that amazing list, you can join Patreon at the link below, hit the join button to support us on YouTube, or show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. And if you are unable to support us financially, just know that watching the video and sharing it really makes a massive difference to how well our videos perform. And of course, help us keep the algorithm at bay. Not me, because I'm a giant fluffy animal, but Kate would appreciate it. So thanks for joining us, and as always, keep evolving!